Hello, Oklahoma. David Dean here, the digital media manager for OETA. And I am joined by the recently Emmy nominated host of Gallery America. Congratulations, Robert Reed. Yes. Are you excited? That so weird to hear. I, I don't think that I even realized that, even though I heard these, this great news until you said it like that. It's like, whoa. That's how you need to start introducing yourself to every person that you meet, um, I think. That's what I would do. <laughs> I'll, I'll call my mom right afterwards. Yes. So they know to refer to me that way too. So. <laughs> well, Oklahoma, we are here for Final Friday, as uh, we hope you are used to seeing by now, um, that we uh, kind of recap the previous month with Gallery America and talk about a little bit of what's coming up. This month in particular is a little unique because we have so much going on, including, as I'm sure you know, uh, the Tulsa Race Massacre 100 Years Later documentary, the uh, host of Back in Time, Robert Birch, and host of Gallery America, Robert Reed, have been working on. So they have had their plates uh, very full, to say the least. So we are going to do this final Friday episode in five minutes and 55 seconds or less. That's the goal. And we're going to nail it because people say that Reed and I can't talk for under six minutes. And I say we can, we can do it. Um, mm -hmm. And we accept their challenge. So uh, we are going to start right now. We have five minutes and 55 seconds to cover everything. Are you ready, Robert? Let's go. Okay. Tonkawa Film Festival. Tell me about it. Last weekend, I got to go to the second annual Tonkawa Film Festival, which started just before the quarantine in March of 2020. Came back, 38 short films from around the world. Uh, there's a parade. It's the only film festival with a parade, which is capped with a gunfight. There are gunfighters on the street, not real guns, not real deaths, feigned deaths. But the short film festival is really interesting because it covered a lot of genres, and short films are interesting because they're so creative. You're not seeing sequels and biopics and remakes that you see in big screen movies so much. Really original stories. I had a lot of fun going there and covering that last week. Um, I love Tonkawa. I lived in Ponca City for a, a quite a bit of time um, as a kid. And so it was, you know, like 20 minutes away and we would go there for camps and for other things. And I love that there is a, the Tonkawa now has a film festival. I just think that's incredible. It's, it's great. I mean, <laughs> the filmmakers are being pulled in this cart, you know, past, you know, kind of grain elevators and Main Street and everyone's, you know, hand painting TFF, Tonkawa Film Festival signs on hardware stores and barber shops. A lot of fun. A lot different than Sundance, maybe, but that's great. They celebrate <laughs> that aspect of it. Well, speaking of films, um, I hear that you have been an extra in, I think there's a film shooting in Oklahoma by Martin Scorsese or something. I don't know what's going on with that. And are you in it? Are you starring in it? What's the scoop <laughs> on DiCaprio? Tell me what you can. Not starring in it. I got to be an extra on uh, Killers of the Flower Moon and massive production. Now you sign all kinds of waivers. You're not supposed to talk about what the scenes were or who you saw and things like that. Some extras are sneaking photos. You should not do that. The, you know, you can get removed from set. They're very protective about keeping everything kind of secret really until it's released probably in late 2022. I can say this. Um, I am amazed by the degree of filmmaking and production and all the people that are weaving together and you know tons and tons of extras i was an oil worker i think i still have oil on my face i can say and um it was one of the highlights really of my career to be able to do that that's a story that i've known about for many many years in fact i even tried to write a screenplay about those sage murders about 20 25 years ago so i feel okay that it's Scorsese doing it and not me, but I was just really happy to be a part of it. It's gonna be epic. I'm gonna tell you, it is going to be epic. This movie. Uh, I am very excited about it. And I've loved sharing uh, the Osage News uh, coverage of, um, of all the filming and the production there. So make sure and check out uh, at Osage News on social media. They're doing a great job of covering everything. And uh, so anyways, now that you mentioned all that stuff that you can't say about the film, what was DiCaprio like? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. Now, one well, thing I, I, I got to go to Osage News because it yeah. rained and we went into Osage News to get out of the rain. I just happened to be in Osage News yesterday looking at papers. So I felt like, oh, wow, so, you know, there was a huge star because I've been seeing Variety Magazine and everyone quoting Osage News. Yeah. Uh, and I got to be there. So that, you know, I was kind of wooed by that. Um, one thing that I have noticed, um, and I got to be quick on this, but uh, I do not understand or I've recently realized I don't understand how a film production even starts and ends with a mass big one like this. Like it's, to me, it's like, how does a big cruise ship float? It just doesn't, I can't register it in my head because I've seen all these behind the scene photos 
And it is just like you've said, a mass production of just like setting things up before you even start filming. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? I was in travel for many years and I saw this experience as a travel experience. It was so exotic to me for the things that you're saying. There's so much behind the scenes that that to me was actually more interesting in a lot of ways than the set. I mean, pre-production starts you know, years ago, you know, researching, getting, getting the rights to the book, thinking about, you know, place that you would go and how many people are in need and budgets are required and things like that. Long before any stars are around or any cameras are rolling. And it continues after production and then the editing and stuff. So it's a, it's like a, a little mini corporation world that just kind of drops down uh, and, and creates this. And I, I can't begin to understand everything, you know, just dropping in for a few days. But yeah, it, it, I love the, the collaboration and team effort it must take and communication to make a film like that or any major film work. It's just incredible. Um, okay, moving on. Uh, this, uh, on with this Monday, we have a very big premiere, which I'm sure you all have heard about because uh, I have not stopped talking about it on OETA because it's so good. Um, but it is uh, Tulsa Race Massacre 100 Years Later. It is the documentary um, that premieres uh, on Monday at 7 p.m. on OETA, and then it re-airs at 10 p.m. on OETA. And then at 8 p.m., we will be making it available to watch online as well. And you can watch Tulsa Race Massacre 100 Years Later um, on uh, OETA and on the PBS video app. Uh, again, that is 7 p.m. Monday. We also made a, um, we did a screening of this film on Tuesday that was absolutely incredible with a panel discussion um, that we will also be sharing uh, with everyone. And uh, we will be making that available after the on-air premiere on Monday. Robert, do you have any final thoughts that you would like to say about the film before it premieres Monday? One of the privileges and highlights of my career, without a doubt, the OETA hasn't really produced anything like it. And I can say, I believe safely, that of all the coverage, a lot of coverage of the Tulsa Race Massacre, I don't think you'll see anything quite like this. I really think everyone should watch this, mixing art, mixing music, mixing poetry with history, all blended together. I think it's quite a unique production. I'm very proud of it, without a doubt. Um, it is, uh, I will have to say, I'm ex extremely proud of it, just working at OETA um, and knowing that we did this. I have seen the, the film, the documentary, and I was a little curious how you would weave and there's our 555. I was a little curious how we would, how you would weave art and history together and you did it so seamlessly. I cannot tell everyone, you have to watch this. It is not just one of the best OETA documentaries of all time. It is truly one of the best documentaries I have ever seen told by Oklahomans where it took place. It's very important. Go to OETA.tv slash Tulsa Race Massacre for playlists, community screenings, additional information. Follow Gallery America on Instagram at OETA Gallery and on Twitter at Gallery OETA. Follow OETA at OETA Oklahoma. Robert Reed, we did it. We came in at about, I would say six minutes, but it was pretty darn close. And I thank you for doing this final Friday in a speedy way with me today. Next time, 10 minutes, 10 seconds. Uh, okay, and then after we can stay on and talk about the film for like an hour. Uh, this course yeah, that's, that's good. Okay, all right, sounds good. Uh, Robert, thank you so much. I know you're so busy. I appreciate taking the time. Everyone also, I don't know if I mentioned this enough, but you can watch all previous episodes of Gallery America on OETA.tv slash Gallery America. So go there, catch up on episodes, including the Emmy nominated episode, um, Joe Slack and the Emmy nomin nominated episode. What was the other one? Uh, <laughs> Maps, uh <laughs> there's another one that's on there uh, but watch all of them they should all be Emmy nominated as far as I'm concerned Robert uh, thank you so much and have a great weekend and I'll see you next final Friday thank you David oh well. just making a call yeah this is Emmy uh, nominated uh, <laughs> yeah we're just finishing the call now thank you so much David yeah, see you later I'll have my people call you your people bye bye <laughs>